words have the power to inspire, motivate, and influence millions of people, which is exactly what these speeches did. And I still believe that these problems can be solved. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 famous speeches in history. We make speeches for each other, and those English liberal magazines that may grant us a few lines. For this list, we're looking at formal speeches delivered to an audience and are not including impromptu quotes such as Neil Armstrong's That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Or sermons from religious figures such as Jesus Christ. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Number 10. Campaign into India, Alexander the Great. His conquests hinged on his army's use of advanced technology, but they also depended on Alexander's legendary ability to command the loyalty of thousands of men. One of the greatest conquerors the world has ever seen. By 335 BC, Alexander the Great controlled all of Greece, Egypt, and the Persian Empire. I don't think Alexander saw any military engagement as anything other than an opportunity to build his own heroic stature. Alexander wanted more than that, however, and set his sights on India. Unfortunately, after nearly 10 years of fighting, his army had no interest in traveling further east and threatened mutiny. They rebelled against him, they refused to go further, and he had to turn around. Alexander, having studied under Aristotle, gave a rousing speech to motivate his men to continue to fight, ending it by stating, I will make those who stay the envy of those who return. And all your great victories fade! It will always be remembered! You left your king in Asia, for I will go on with my Asians. Number nine, Germany declares war on the USA, Adolf Hitler. Nicht der Staat hat uns geschaffen, sondern wir schaffen uns unseren Staat. Hey, we didn't say all of these guys were good guys. A fantastic orator with the ability to inspire millions to carry out his plans. One of Hitler's greatest speeches came on December 11, 1941, when Germany declared war on the United States. After summarizing Germany's military successes in the previous year, Hitler turned his attention to the United States. He stressed that Germany had done nothing wrong to America at any point in history. Out of retaliation, the United States declared war on Germany later that day, making sure America was fully involved in both the European and Pacific theaters of the war. The große Not unseres Volkes, die uns einst ergriffen hat. Number 8. Funeral Oration, Pericles. It's probably not a more important figure in the history of classical Greece than Pericles. What do you say to a city that has seen fathers, husbands, and sons die in a war that has no end in sight? That was the task facing Pericles when he gave a speech at a public funeral for all Athenian men who had been killed in the Peloponnesian War against Sparta. Pericles' expectation was that after a year or two, but no more than three, the Spartans would realize that they could not win the war because the Athenians would never give them the infantry battle they needed in order to win and they had no other device available. Rather than mourn the dead, Pericles enthusiastically praised Athens and its citizens. He used his rhetoric ability to motivate all Athenians to continue to fight to ensure these men did not die in vain. The state thus offers a valuable prize as the garland of victory in this race of valor for the reward both of those who have fallen and their survivors. And where the rewards for merit are greatest, there are found the best citizens. Is it any wonder the historian Thucydides called him the first citizen of Athens? But for all his power and sway, Pericles did not rule the city. For Athens was a democracy. Number seven, Second Virginia Convention, Patrick Henry. I know not what course others may take, 
But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Give me liberty or give me death. These famous words that would forever be associated with the American Revolution were spoken by Patrick Henry at the Second Virginia Convention in 1775. We must fight! I repeat it, sir! We must fight! Virginia was one of the most important colonies in the New World, and without its help, the Revolution had little chance of succeeding. There is no retreat but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged. Their clanking may be heard on the plains of Boston. The war is inevitable, and let it come. I repeat, sir, let it come. Henry's speech was so powerful that the entire convention, which contained the likes of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, is said to have sat in silence for several minutes afterward. Patrick Henry was more responsible for getting the revolution underway uh, than any other founding father. Number six, inaugural address, John F. Kennedy. Let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. After two world wars, a conflict in Korea, a crippling depression, and relations with the Soviet Union reaching a boiling point, the United States needed a reason to feel optimistic. But most threatening of all, he sees nearly 1,600 American strategic bombers and 200 intercontinental ballistic missiles, which can strike the Soviet Union from the U.S. Enter John F. Kennedy. Do you want a man for president who's seasoned through and through? At only 43, JFK was the youngest president to ever be elected, and he gave one of the most memorable inauguration addresses of all time. And let every other power know that this hemisphere intends to remain the master of its own house. Stressing the importance of resiliency and nationalism, he famously stated, And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Number five, quit India, Mahatma Gandhi. Until we stand in the fields with the millions that toil each day under the hot sun, we will not represent India, nor will we ever be able to challenge the British as one nation. Many passionate speeches have been given by someone speaking up for an oppressed people, but rarely have they advocated for passive resistance. This salt comes from the Indian Ocean. Let every Indian claim it as his right. And so, once more, the man of non-violence has challenged the might of the British Empire. Mahatma Gandhi did exactly that in 1942, when he called for non-violent resistance to British occupation and inspired the Quit India movement. Declaring, here is a mantra, a short one that I give you. It is, do or die. We shall either free India or die in the attempt. Calling himself a friend of Britain, he declared that he was attempting to save the British from their mistakes. While the Quit India movement was ultimately a failure, the British government did eventually grant India independence. Nonviolent revolution had freed India. In the 50 years since, it has transformed the world. As Martin Luther King later said, Christ gave me the message, Gandhi gave me the method. Number four. Inaugural Address, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. One has to imagine millions of people clustered around their radio sets in towns all across the country. They don't know what to expect of this new president. JFK surely delivered one of the greatest inaugural addresses in history. But decades earlier, Franklin Delano Roosevelt began his lengthy career as president with this iconic speech. They only know the rules of a generation of self-seekers. They have no vision, and when there is no vision, the people perish. At the time, America was in the middle of the worst depression in history, and had essentially run Herbert Hoover out of office. And I am convinced that you will again give that support to leadership in these critical days. FDR was able to win over the hearts and minds of a discouraged American population with a passionate and confident speech 
promising to wage war against the economic crisis facing the country. Of course, having a strong opening line always helps. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Number three, we shall fight on the beaches, Winston Churchill. If we had kept together after the last war, if we had taken common measures for our safety, this renewal of the curse need never have fallen upon us. One of three key speeches given by Churchill during the Battle of France, this rousing address was delivered under less than ideal circumstances. And if you look at uh, what Churchill achieved every day, it is absolutely mind-boggling. He was running on a different kind of petrol. The English Prime Minister was forced to not only warn the English people about the potential for France's catastrophic defeat, but also to prepare them for war on their home soil. Less than a month earlier, Churchill had declared that the Allies would be victorious. With this looking less and less likely by the day, Churchill resoundingly stated that the British would never surrender to Germany. We shall never surrender. Instead, he memorably said they would fight them in France, on the seas, in the air, in the streets, and on the beaches. We shall fight in the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island whatever the cost may be. Number two, I have a dream, Martin Luther King Jr. America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. One of the most inspirational speeches of all time, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered this famous call to action to over 250,000 people on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963. And the destruction, the life, and of the ongoing progress of the Negro will be the destruction of the ongoing progress of the nation. King demanded an end to racism in America, stating that 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, African Americans were still not considered equal. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Perhaps surprisingly, the I Have a Dream line was not in the original draft. It was improvised on the spot by King after gospel singer Mahalia Jackson yelled out from the crowd, urging him to tell them about the dream. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Before we yield the floor to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hence, every discrimination against women in the constitutions and laws of the several states is today null and void, precisely as is every one against Negroes. I have only one thing to say. You turn if you want to. <laughs> the ladies not for turning. Well now, it is time to be off. I to die and you to live. But which of us has the happier prospect is unknown to anyone but heaven. If you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Today, I consider, I consider myself, myself the luckiest, the luckiest man, man on the face, on of, the the face earth. of the earth. Number one, the Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln. I think if I had my choice of all the moments to be present at it in that war period, it would be at Gettysburg during Lincoln's delivery. The Gettysburg Address is without a doubt one of the most famous speeches in American history. And then he went on to embolden the Union cause with some of the most stirring words ever spoken. Taking inspiration from Pericles' funeral oration, Lincoln delivered it four months after the Union Army defeated the Confederacy at the bloody Battle of Gettysburg. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, 
In less than three minutes, Lincoln issued a moving plea for the Union to pay tribute to the dead by continuing to fight for the principles outlined in the Declaration of Independence freedom, liberty, and equality. Finally, the president hears a long, thunderous applause. Now history will take the measure of the president's remarks. Referenced countless times, including by JFK and Martin Luther King Jr., the transformative impact of this speech on the country has earned it a prominent place in the history of the United States. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite famous speech? For more exciting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Because you've fallen in love with all the things in life that destroy men.